Hi everybody and thanks to John for the introduction. I'm really excited to be talking to you this afternoon about using social media to drive innovation. Innovation is a real buzzword at the moment and I think that's um, rightly so, you know, the world's changing and automation and robotics are really going to change the jobs that we have in the future and I think creativity and innovation is going to be a big part of um, how we make sure our businesses thrive and um, our opportunities for our kids in careers um, continue to be there. So I just wanted to open with this first um, quote that I really love, creativity is thinking up new things, innovation is doing new things. And I really um, think that's important to keep in mind as we're talking through um, this webinar today that um, it's great to come up with new ideas and create, being create, creative is, is heaps of fun, um, but to be innovative we actually have to take action, we have to actually act on um, those things. So. Uh, I think it's really important that um, we keep that in mind as we move through. So a little bit about me, John's already sort of filled you in on, on most of it I guess. Uh, this is my gang here, I've got four kids um, and a husband and I'm a farm wife at Blue Sky Produce uh, which is a mango, avocado and lime farm up here in far north Queensland uh, in a little town called Mareeba. I'm a chartered accountant by trade and I'm really passionate about um, regional Australia and um, making sure that our regional businesses thrive and I think there's heaps of opportunities um, for them to do so with technology evolving the way it has and I think that it's really important that um, you know business owners in rural areas um, continue to learn and to take use of the technology that's available. So I'm sure I'm already preaching to the converted because you guys are here and listening online. So that's terrific. Um, now what I um, wanted to mention as well is that I'm not a creative person. You know, I'm a chartered accountant, I like data, I like um, facts and figures, but um, you know, being creative and drawing and all of that sort of stuff doesn't come naturally to me. I'm the person in my family that no one wants to partner with for Pictionary because I'm just hopeless, you know, I'm a stick figure drawer. Um, and so I just wanted to debunk a couple of things, I guess, about innovation and being creative. And um, that's that, you know, you're born creative. I've got some quotes up here on the screen. I hope you can all see them. But, you know, people often say, I'm just not a creative person. And I say that myself. And, you know, I don't know where to start. Everything's already been thought of. Um, and what I, what I want to say to that is that creativity isn't something you're born with. It's actually a skill that can be learned. So, you know, a couple of years back now I got involved with our local startup group called Startup Tablelands and um, did some courses around, you know, um, startup philosophy and um, the real theory, I guess, behind innovation. And it's been really valuable for me to see that there's a real process there. And if you're, per if you're a person like myself that's a real um, facts and figures and likes a real list and a step process, then um, rest assured that, that you know, you can take that into being innovative in your business. Um, and it's like any other skill, the more that you do, um, the better at it that you get, you know. It, it, your creative juices are a muscle just like anything else so that the more you make them work and um, apply them, the easier it gets and the better you get at being creative. Something that um, we really need to keep in mind too as we talk about innovation is that uh, failure is a big part of innovation and it's probably the most important part um, because we have to be willing to take risks and to have a go at things if we're ever going to try new things and be innovative in our business. Um, you know, the fastest way to succeed is to double your failure rate. Now I know that sounds terrible but it's the truth. The fastest way um, to do better at something or to come up with a new idea is to come up with 10 of them and try them all and um, use the best one. And when we're talking about, you know, being innovative in our business, perfectionism is our enemy. Um, it will really hold us back if we're not willing to try anything or do anything new because we're scared of failing or we're scared of not doing it perfectly. 
I think that, um, you know, as I mentioned before, you have to develop your idea muscle, you have to use it, you have to um, make it work and that, that means that you'll have to be disciplined, you know, you'll have to have a go at new ideas regularly, you'll have to make them a part of your business routine to write down 10 new ideas every morning and, you know, try, well, pick one of them out of that list every single day to give a try. Um, I, you know, it's really tricky because our brains naturally try to protect us. They don't want us to do silly things. They don't want us to feel embarrassed um, if an idea doesn't work. But um, we have to really try to override that brain and um, make it realise that it's okay to fail forward is what I guess this terminology is in the startup world, that it's okay to... Um, to not do well at something as long as you're moving forward and you're trying something different. Um, you know, you don't have to be great, you just need to do something and that comes back to that creativity being the fun part and innovation being the doing part of it. It doesn't have to be great, just give it a go. If you wait for innovation to come along, unfortunately it just doesn't strike like lightning. You know, I think a lot of us think that it's just going to come to us one day in a dream or as we're driving along we'll have this light bulb moment and 90% um, of the time th that's not how innovation works. You know, it's all about doing the work, having the discipline, um, having the courage to have a go at something and, and doing it regularly. You have to go through the motions of trying new things. Um, and I like to say that, you know, if, you're, if you get good at coming up with heaps of terrible ideas, um, eventually you'll have to get um, good at one eventually. So terrible ones are in there, but, um, you know, you'll get good at a new one eventually. Okay, so um, where does social media play a part in this? Well, what I say to that is that for good ideas and true innovation, you need human interaction, conflict, argument and debate. So what do I mean by that? Well, you have to test your ideas. You have to go and ask people, you know, what do you think of this and be willing to um, justify why you think it's a good idea for your business. Um, you have to be able to um, talk to your customers, you know, get out there and um, ask them what do you want, is this a great idea or not. Um, and I think that's where social media really comes into its own, especially for our regional businesses in that we can um, reach people all over the world, we can reach customers globally, internationally, um, within Australia, within the next town, just by getting online and um, developing our community via, via social media. So um, th that's, you know, I think that's, it's a really important part of um, business and coming up with ideas is being able to test them cheaply and to ask people um, and connect with people in a really timely fashion and that's where social media is really useful. So um, I just want to share a little bit of my story, I guess, and, and how our innovation journey um, has evolved and, um, yeah, why I got involved with social media. So I grew up in a little country town called Melanda and I grew up on a dairy farm there. So my parents um, were dairy farmers my whole life and it was terrific. You know, it was a great way to grow up. but. Um, really hard work. It's, you know, milking twice a day, every morning, every afternoon, 365 days a year. Um, and I'm one of three girls and so like most um, farms, you don't have a choice as a kid whether you're involved or not. You're just required. You're an essential part of the workforce. And, um, you know, being a girl, I was never, my dad would never let us say that um, we couldn't do something. You know, if we went out fencing with him and we found that the fence post was too heavy, he we, he would always say to us, it's not I can't, it's how can I, you know. It's never, you can never say I can't, you have to think about, okay, how can I do this? So in the fencing situation, it was, well, how can I lift this fence post, you know, it's, it's too heavy for me, how can I lift it? I can't say I can't, can I use a log that can help me lever it to get it up? Um, and I guess that's, that's, been my mentality all along with innovation is that it's not about saying I can't do this, it's always about how can I, what 
you know, how many ideas can I come up with that help me say how can I, how can I solve this problem? So um, yeah, thanks Dad, that's all back to the dairy farm days. So fast forward about 20 or so years and um, I'm a qualified chartered accountant and my hubby and I are living in Brisbane. And um, we have what our families like to say is a midlife crisis and um, we decided to pack up our jobs and our kids and head off around Australia in a camper van. And um, this is where I really, I guess, got involved and fell in love with social media and really saw the power of what social media can do. So we started a blog to document our travels around Australia and um, we had a Facebook page and Twitter and um, Instagram to um, document our travels and you know within the first sort of week of um, being on the road we had really great following of people and we were really surprised at how terrific it was to pull into a new town as we were traveling along and I could put a post out on social media and say hey we're in Catherine um, you know where should we camp what should we do is there anything great that we should see here and it was terrific to be able to have that instant response from people that lived in the area and that could give us that real feedback um, and you know it really helped us out with having some great experiences as we were traveling and um, you know it was amazing to me that I could be in the in a shop in the middle of Catherine in Woolworths and have some other travelers come up to us and say hey are you guys the family from are we there yet that was the name of our blog um, we were like yeah we are and they were from Western Australia and you know we'd come from Brisbane and you just happened to be shopping in a Woolworths and um, people could recognize you and say g'day and you know I think that really demonstrated to me the power of connectivity and um, you know the far-reaching sort of ability of social media to connect people. So to cut a long story short we got a couple of months into that trip and um, my hubby's uncle called and said to us we were on the beach in Broome he said get off the beach you bums uh, come and have a go at managing a mango farm uh, here in Mariba and we thought you know what we'll give it a go. So my hubby was a travel agent and um, I was a chartered accountant. Yes, we'd both sort of grown up um, with farming and um, thought that that was something that we'd like to get back to, but we really had no idea what we were doing. As we were driving back from Broome to the Atherton Tablelands, my hubby was Googling, you know, how to drive a tractor um, <laughs> on YouTube. He zoomed in on the real estate photo of the tractor um, that we'd been emailed um, from the farm that we were going to and got the model number and he plugged that into Google and said you know tell me how to drive this thing so that he didn't turn up to the farm totally um, totally not knowing what to do at all so it was really you know that's another way that he, we were able to use social media and YouTube to really gather information um, to set us up for our journey so um, this photo that I've got up is a slide of Blue Sky Produce and you can see why it's called Blue Sky Produce and um, we have 300 sunny days a year up here. So um, now what happened when we got here was that um, you know Mojave got stuck into the farming side of things out driving tractors and um, you know digging holes and learning the ropes that way and um, I really struggled to find my feet. Um, it's a family farming business you know there's not a lot of um, money to pay everybody you know there's only so many paid roles in a family farming operation and um, there just wasn't a really a role for me and I was getting really frustrated you know I was saying to my hubby there's nothing I, I can't be involved I really you know I want to be a part of this but there's not really any room for me here and I was getting cranky and you know I was saying those I can't and I had to really think to myself you you know I can't keep saying I can't it has to be how can I how can I get involved in our business you know what can I do to add value how can I help um, and the other problem that we were having is that um, you know we were a new farming family and we'd arrived in September and our mango season was due to start in December so um, we really needed to make some connections and we needed to let people know that you know our business was up and running that we had mangoes for sale that we had a packing shed with facilities 
um, that people could come and pack with us and it was really expensive um, for us to put advertisements in the local paper um, you know as most of you probably know um, print and newspaper advertising is quite expensive so even for us up here in a regional town it's about six hundred dollars for a um, you know sort of a quarter page ad um, so we could put we put one of those in but then once we'd done that you know we had no idea how many people had seen it if anybody had seen it so we really had to um, I had to think you know how can I get the word out about our farm I can't say I can't you know we can't afford to um, it was how can I how can I spread the word that blue sky produce is here and um, you know we need people to um, know about us so um, that was where I thought well social media I love it I can get involved with social media on the farm that's something that I know how to do it's something I can I can be a part of um, so that's what we did. Um, this is Blue Sky Produce. The Instagram, Facebook, Twitter handles are there. We've got a website, so um, check it out. They're, they're, that's what I started um, a couple of years ago to keep myself busy and out of trouble and stop whinging at the husband, I guess. Um, and you know, our families laughed at us. They 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 thought, oh, what are you doing? You know, why would you have social media for a farm? You know, you're not in the city anymore. You, you're crazy. Farms don't use social media. You know why? Why are you worrying about that? And um, you know, I felt a bit silly to start with, but I thought, no, I really think that this will be valuable for our business um, to help connect us into the industry, but also to help market our produce. So, um, you know, we were posting on Facebook, we were on Instagram. My hubby does mostly of our Instagram out in the paddock. You know, he's got the mobile phone in his pocket. It's really simple to take a photo and. Um, flick it up in a few minutes and it's a bit of fun for him in his um, farm day. So um, I guess the first success story that we had with um, social media for our business was that we popped this photo up on um, Twitter and Instagram and you can see that we found a big mango out in the paddock in our um, second season here and we thought oh you know this is big mango it's a bit interesting we popped it on the scales there with another normal sized mango and um, just popped it on Twitter and it was amazing to see um, the response that we got to that you know within minutes we had the local radio stations calling the local papers calling saying hey we want to come and do a story um, I don't know it might have been a slow news week um, but I really think that the fact was that we put it out there, you know, we used the hashtags for our local region, we were hashtagging Farm of Queensland, mangoes, it was mango season, so, um, you know, people know that Twitter is, um, is used quite um, heavily by journalists as a tool to help them source stories, so um, we were aware that that was a platform that they regularly checked, so that was somewhere that we regularly posted. Now our mango wasn't, you know, it was a big mango for us but lots of other farmers jumped on and said, you know, it's not that big, um, you know, what, what's all the fuss about? But I guess um, people were interested. So this, this slide here shows, that's a picture of my hubby and my son um, and that was the front page of the Cairns Post which is our local um, paper up here, um, sort of our regional paper. Uh, now we didn't pay for that. Um, that was free advertising I guess for us that was just a result of um, you know that tweet that Instagram being picked up by the reporters um, and so then you know we had National 9 News come up and do a story that went nationally all over Australia it was a two minute sort of clip of my hubby and kids talking about our mango we called it Mangozilla um, so it was really you know a, a stack of free advertising and promotion for us in the beginning when we were a new a new business and it was just a fun kind of story um, you know yes it wasn't a huge mango that other farms didn't have big mangoes too of course they did I guess but we were able to be found you know and that's the the tricky thing in business and in regional business particularly if you don't tell your story how can people find you how can they know about you so social media was really useful for us from that perspective. 
Now, we had this big mango and we had all this interest um, in our Mangozilla and we thought, well, what are we going to do with it now? So we decided that we would auction it um, for the Fire bale, bale of Hay charity. So all proceeds from our auction of this big mango would go to the Buy a Bale of Hay charity. And again, it was a, well, it's not I can't, it's not I can't, I don't know what we're going to do with this mango. It was, okay, how can we use this mango to do good or to help further the business? Um, and, you know, we thought, well, why don't we auction it? There's been a lot of interest. So we just did an online auction on Facebook. You can see um, I've put a slide up there with one of the posts that we, we had it going, the online auction happening for a day. And it was crazy the interest that we got from um, wholesalers in Sydney, in Melbourne, in Brisbane, who all sort of started bidding on this mango. It was a bit of fun. Um, and it was, you know, it was a really simple thing that we could do online on Facebook. We had people watching and commenting. You know, I was able to put a post up there saying, hey, I've just got to go bath the kids um, back in a minute to update you on the auction. So people really got a good understanding that we were just a family business, just a regular family doing our thing um, and having a go at doing something different. And, you know, this is one of those times where you had to embrace failure and understand that potentially this could flop. Um, and it was a bit of a worry, <laughs> you know, I thought if we put this auction out there and nobody gets involved, it'll be a bit embarrassing, but um, it was worth the risk, you know, the, the, the risk was minimal, it might be a bit embarrassing, but it wasn't going to cost us anything, it wasn't going to be a huge investment of our time or money, um, and, you know, the potential there was to do something different and fun and a bit more promotion. Um, so in the end, that Mangozilla mango sold for $550 um, to a Brisbane retailer. And the other, the other terrific thing that happened from that was that we had about another six pallets of these oversized mangoes that we couldn't sell because they were out of spec for the Coles and Woolies and, and those sort of places. So we had to, um, we were going to have to dump them. My hubby's like, I can't sell these, you know, I'm going to have to dump them, no one's going to take them. And again, it comes back to that saying, it's not I can't, it's how can I? And I thought, you know what, we've got this um, buyer in Brisbane who's bought our Mangozilla mango, why don't we ask and see if he'd like to buy the um, the extra oversized mangoes and he could have a display in his store. And that's exactly what he did. He bought all six pallets of those oversized mangoes, which was about, I don't know, six or seven thousand dollars in um, sales figures for us of fruit that we thought we were going to have to dump. So, um, you know, I'm an accountant, it comes back to having a real dollar value at the end of it. Um, so it wasn't just having fun on Facebook, there was a real business return for us. Um, and the other story I'd just like to quickly share with you was um, the following season with our avocado season. So again, we're still new farmers, um, we're still learning the ropes and our orchard was in um, a bit of disrepair. So we had a lot of uh, reject avocados in that year and you can see on the slide that there's some real wind damage to our avocados. So we had about six tonne, which was six bins of these reject avocados. and um, you know, my hubby's saying, well, I'm going to have to dump these, I can't sell them. And again, it's like, can't, you know, and I thought to myself, we can't dump these, you know, how, how can we sell them? So I thought, why not, let's just put a post on Facebook and see if anyone wants to buy some reject avocados. And you can see that that post went crazy. That post asking for sales of our reject avocados reached over 104,000 people. It was shared 874 times and we had over 400 orders. My hubby was saying to me, quick, unplug the internet, like stop it, this is crazy, you know, it was, a, it was, it was a bit of chaos really because it got to the point that we were just getting orders coming through and we had no idea by this stage if we'd already sold everything that we had. Um, but thankfully, you know, we were able to work through it and um, we managed to sell every single one of those reject avocados um, and that was six tonne and close to $15,000 in sales. So again, it was using social media to have a real um, business return for us. So as I said to you, I'm a chartered accountant by trade and I like my statistics and numbers. So I wanted to throw these um, statistics in there, which are the social media stats for Australia 
um, as at the end of September 2017. Uh, I think they're really powerful numbers that really, if I haven't convinced you with sharing a little bit of our story and how we've used social media um, already, then I think that then these stats speak for themselves. So there's 17 million active users on um, Facebook in Australia and now our population is about 24 million. So um, that's roughly 70% of our population is using Facebook. So that says to me if you're not using Facebook as a tool in your business then potentially you're missing a large portion of where your market is you know, where they're shopping, where they're researching, where they're doing their talking. I also really like this list because it gives you a really useful idea of where to spend your energy. Um, you know, we're in business, we've all got limited time and um, limited resources. So if you're looking at, okay, where should I direct my social media energy? Well, you know, I say to everybody, we'll start where the users are. So, you know, Facebook is where most Australian active users sit currently, so start there. You know, get a handle on that and then move to YouTube or move to Instagram. You know, work your way through the list um, until you're comfortable and um, have a presence in each of those different categories um, and, you know, get your head around what you'd like to do on Twitter and what you'd like to do on Instagram. I don't I don't think that you have to do them all at once. Um, I definitely think it's valuable to um, grab yourself the handles on every account when you're setting up your social media that you you know you grab the Facebook handle for Blue Sky Produce, you grab the Instagram one, you grab the Twitter one so that you know you've got those um, those usernames saved when you do get to them, but you certainly don't have to do them all at once. Um, so it's a really, and, and the other thing is that, you know, um, the statistics show that one in two users are on Facebook globally. So it's not only in Australia that, you know, this is where our market is existing, it's globally um, the demographic are using social media and I think that if we ignore it as a business tool then we're really doing a disservice um, to ourselves. So I just want to run through a few tips that I think um, are really important to keep in mind with social media. And actually one thing I should have said right at the beginning is that although I love social media and I, you know, I think it's a really valuable business tool, I don't, I, I really think that you have to make sure that you um, have a website or have a mailing list or um, a blog or something like that that is a platform that you own. And I say that because if um, Mark Zuckerberg decides tomorrow that he's had enough of Facebook and he wants to shut it down and that's where you've spent all your energy building your customer base, then that's gone. You know, you're setting yourself up to be subject to risk, I guess, um, if you haven't established, you know, a mailing list or a website where you can send your customers and um, your community to find you directly. And, and you know, you want to send them to your website or your blog or your mailing list so that they really get to have a good look around and don't get lost in the social media world of checking out funny cat memes or, <laughs> you know, as, as they do as they scroll through. You really want to keep them um, interested in what you've got to say and and um, and what you're all about, and that's the other the other really powerful um, part of social media is that I think today the way people are spending their money um, is changing. You know, they're really wanting to connect with the businesses that they buy things from or you know that they want to work with, and they want to understand what those businesses are about. And that can potentially mean that they're willing to play to pay a little bit more if they know your story, if they feel connected to you, if they feel like they're a part of um, your community. And you know, social media is a really powerful way to connect with them and um, tell your story on a daily basis. So um, social media definitely video is king these days so um, you know your Facebook lives, your little short video clips are the way to go with your posting um, on all of your platforms really um, and I definitely recommend doing a short video course or you know doing some research online to work out how you can best um, upskill yourself in taking videos and being comfortable in talking in videos yourself. Um, 
emojis. So you've got I've got a picture there that's from the Queensland Australia uh, Facebook page, but you can see they've used emojis, and most people um, do pop a few emojis in their posts these days because you want to stand out. You know, we've all got really short attention spans, and as we're scrolling through our social media feeds. Um, you need something to catch your eye, so um, emojis are a really easy way to put a bit of colour and a bit of variety into your post and um, catch your customers' eyes. Um, most of your new smartphones have the 360 degree uh, photos, so they give that element of um, immersing a person in whatever you're demonstrating, whether it's a product or a view of your um, out your window of the office today or you know out in the paddock um, letting people have an insight into what what it actually looks like to see their mangoes on the trees um, those those photos just give that extra element of connection and um, interest on your social media feeds and polls and surveys a really powerful way when we're talking about testing new ideas um, so if you've got an idea, you know, if you've been testing that idea muscle daily and you're writing your 10 ideas um, list every day for different things that you can try in your business, then it's a really useful way to just throw out a survey or a poll on um, Facebook or in a group um, and just ask your customers, hey, what do you think of this? You know, would you be interested? Um, do you like the green or the blue of our new logo? Um, they're really simple cheap ways to test your new ideas in your business and um, get that market feedback and that validation coming back to you straight away without spending hours on it or you know engaging a web designer or you know doing all of that sort of stuff only to realize now my customers aren't actually interested in that um, and by then you've spent so much energy and time and I, I think we all are guilty of it you know we get tied up in the creative and the fun side of doing a new website or new business cards or a new product, but we forget to actually test the market, to ask our customers, um, do you like this? And, you know, um, that's a really important part that people forget um, with social media is that you can use it to be social, to chat to people, to engage with people. It's not just all about promoting your new product. It's not just all about saying, look at this or buy this. It's about having those conversations. Um, that's why social media is called social media, you know. It's to chat, it's to, to um, get involved with people. Uh, some more tips. So the general rule is, um, you know, to post twice a day if you can. And I know that seems a lot. Um, so if you're just starting out in social media, then I'd recommend that even if you only post once a week, that you be consistent with it. So if you're only going to post once a week, you'd say, I'm only posting on Sundays at 7 p.m. And you do that every Sunday at 7 p.m. So your customers know, you know, Back Paddock Business will do a new post every week on Sunday at 7 p.m. So I can jump over there and check out what, you know, Jess has got to say. Um, and then build it up from there. Then go to twice a week, same days of the week, three times a week. Um, and just make sure that you're staying in people's news feeds because the Facebook algorithm will drop you out pretty fast um, if you have a big gap between your last post and your next one. And um, then it's really hard work to make sure that you're visible again for people. I always say change your cover photo regularly. So that's the big photo up the top of your um, Facebook page or your Twitter account um, just to keep it interesting, just to... Um, add something new. Triple check your posts. So that means, you know, no spelling mistakes, no grammatical errors. I think there's nothing worse than that. Um, so it's a good idea if you've got someone else in your business to get them to run their eyes over it. Or if you've got a junior person perhaps doing your social media for you, that you get them to schedule the posts and then you run your eyes over them as a triple check um, just to make sure that you've got those spelling and grammatical er errors. Um, taken out because there's people love to point them out to you and that loses the impact of what you wanted your post to be about. Uh, we've already talked about, you know, making sure that they're visual, so video is best, but images are always a must. So no Facebook posts with just text only. You've got to put an image in there. Um, use scheduling so that you don't have to waste hours and hours on Facebook. You know, you can sit down for two hours on a Monday morning and schedule your posts out for the week. 
um, post when your community is online so you can jump up in your publishing tools on your Facebook page and check out via your insights you know what times are my customers online when are they there when's the best time to post um, that's a great little um, website for um, getting emojis when you're doing all your posting on your desktop computers so check that out um, I always advise trying to come up with content pillars um, which means you know for us at Blue Sky Produce we'll have a content pillar that's mangoes then we'll have one that's avocados then we'll have one that's limes then we'll have one that's just farm life um, then we'll have one that's just farming funny stuff um, so that just gives you that variety in your posts so that it keeps it interesting for people and also helps you come up with ideas um, for your post so you know I have a Excel spreadsheet that has those headings at the top avocados limes mangoes farm funnies and I'll pop links in there and different ideas as I think of them so that when I come to sit down at the start of the week and schedule my posts out I've got um, my content ideas already created there paid posts really work so you can invest for as little as five dollars and they are really um, powerful tools for getting your advertising out on social media and don't forget to tag people in your posts, tag your customers, tag other businesses that you'd like to work with, be social, you know, have a bit of fun with it and let people know that you're there. Um, these are some helpful social media tools. I'm running through these really quickly but happy to ask questions um, when we get to our question time at the end. So um, the Pages app, if you're not already using that for Facebook, for your Facebook page, make sure you are on your devices. It's a much um, easier way to manage your Facebook pages. Make sure you're using hashtags, um, that's how people find you, particularly on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and I always recommend to people, you know, check out other pages that you like that maybe are in a similar business to yours and see what hashtags they're using. Um, and do a bit of, you know, research. Click on those hashtags, see what other people um, are using. Uh, and then you know create a note so that you can copy and paste those into all of your posts um, there. Photo grids are a great one for collages. Canva and Easel are terrific. Definitely check out Canva. It's made um, my life much easier for those of you that are like me and not really artistic but um, Canva gives you some great templates to make your posts look really um, professional and um, really give them that graphic design kind of look. Word, Swag, Typerama are a beautiful mess. They're all really cheap apps that um, are great for posting um, some great headings and titles over images. Quick is a great app um, for doing your video editing on your um, smartphones. iTalk if you'd like to record audio. And Hootsuite is really terrific for scheduling and keeping an eye on pages that you like to watch um, and to see if your business is being mentioned by other pages. Um, so definitely worth having a play around with all of those and they're really, you know, most of them are free or low cost, um, so easy for you to have a play with and um, without having to outlay too much money. Something that I really, I really like to draw people's attention to is that um, I, I love this quote from Henry Ford. He says, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. So what, what's so powerful about this quote is that when you're thinking about ways to innovate in your business or do things differently, it's not always asking your customers what they want because they won't necessarily know what they want. They won't necessarily be able to tell you. So it's just trying to think outside the box and come up with a whole heap of different ideas um, to see which direction your business could head in. So we're just about through. I wanted to finish with um, some tips for coming up with ideas and being creative and um, the ways that I guess you can use social media um, when we're talking about these things. So I've said to you, you know, creativity is a muscle and we have to use it. So if you can free write and brainstorm 10 ideas every single morning, you know, in a notebook or on a whiteboard, it's a terrific way just to keep that, um, you know, keep those those ideas coming and it's the, um, the rule of numbers, you know, that if you if you've got 50 new ideas every week, then surely one of them will be a reasonable one. 
Um, so that 750words.com has a great app that you can check out for dumping your ideas into. Um, the other important thing is to let your mind wander and to have some downtime. So, you know, lots of people love meditation, they love exercise for that. Um, that's why it's so important to have a holiday. All the small business owners out there will be laughing at me when I say that, but it is really important to have some weekends, to have some downtime because you really need to free your mind up to be able to come up with those ideas. Um, and, you know, there's heaps of great meditation and exercise groups um, that have uh, Facebook groups that you can join um, to give you some guidance in that area. You really need to expose yourself to new ideas too, so to read and travel, network with other people, um, listen to podcasts, and I think that's where social media can be really useful. You know, you can you can spend hours um, researching different ideas, following other pages that are similar to yours, um, you know, joining Facebook groups where you can network. There's stacks of um, business networking groups on Facebook that you can join in. Um, I think podcasts are terrific too um, for exposing you to new ideas. I love how I built this. It's a great podcast and the TED Talks are terrific. You can get them on YouTube. Um, definitely worth checking out to give you that inspiration, especially if you're um, regional or remote and it's hard to get to conferences and um, seminars and those sorts of things to really give you that broader perspective. Um, laugh. That's another great tip for helping you to be creative and come up with ideas. It's just um, getting yourself in the mood, I guess, re relaxing um, your mind to allow it to do something different. Um, you can take a creative course if you're like me and you like the structure and the real step-by-step um, -step process to creativity, then courses are definitely helpful to give you that real um, you know, that really step-by-step -step guide to different ways that you can be innovative in your business. Um, you can solve a problem. So that's back to my, it's not I can't, it's how can I. So what's the problem and how can I come up with a solution to it often drives our innovation. Um, and finally, um, Uberize it. So it's okay to um, have a look at what another business is doing. It can be in the same industry or a different industry and, and work out how you could apply that to your business. You know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. It's okay to, to see a good idea and implement it in, in your business and that's innovation in itself because it's something that you haven't been doing before. So don't be scared um, to, to apply good ideas to your own business. So that wraps me up. Um, I hope that you found some really valuable stuff in there and um, you know, there's, we've got a few minutes now for some questions but I just want to leave you with the fact that you know, it's not just about being creative, it's not just about ideas, it's actually about making those ideas happen. So we have to actually act on things, we have to actually engage and talk to people um, and we just have to get out there and do it. So that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, um, and showing some real insight and, and into strategies that we can actually keep innovation alive and keep our keep that fire burning and come up with new ideas to actually make our businesses work. Um, we do have, have an opportunity for some asking some new questions. So please feel free to ask questions in the question tab below. We'll be answering them through, but we'll start off with a few here. Um, so Jess, you talked extensively about focusing on that list of um, social media platforms. Um, I guess the first question is, which social media platform should I focus on? Is it, should it always be the, the biggest first, Facebook first, and then, and then go downwards, or should we actually be focusing on where my customers are? Yeah, look, I think definitely if you, if you know, particularly for the foodie and design businesses and most of our customers are real visual in those businesses. So, you know, Instagrams are where they're at. So if you know where your customers are, if you know that they're on Instagram or they're on Twitter, then yes, head there first. But, but if you're not sure where they are, um, I definitely would work through the list because, you know, as, as we saw, Facebook had 17 million regular Australian users. So that's a lot of, that's a big customer base right there. So it's a good place to start if you're not sure. Wonderful. Um, we've got another question here. Um, 
failure may be essential, but what if failure costs me too much to try and fail? Uh, what if it means losing my business? Yeah. So when I, when I talk about failure, I don't mean um, that we have to go bankrupt or we have to, um, you know, when, I, when I'm talking about failure, I'm talking about just trying new ideas and I guess that's where I bring it back to. We want to do, we want to try something new for as cheaply and as quickly as we possibly can so that it's not going to have a big impact on our business. So that's where we talk about using our tools like social media where we can ask the questions and, and do a bit of that research before we outlay any money. Um, that That's what I mean by failure. I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't want everybody to go out there and go bankrupt. That's not what we mean, but it's about trying different, different ways of doing things as cheaply and as quickly as we, as possible and, you know, pivoting or changing the way we do things to make sure that um, we're not wasting our energy and wasting our money um, and tweaking our business in the right direction. Mm. Um, Suzanne Holden asks, um, do you only use social media or do you, do you capture people's details and send out newsletters too? How do you rate direct marketing this way? Yeah, look, I, I think, as I said, I think it's really important to be capturing your customers' details because if we're relying only on social media, then we're taking a risk because they're third-party platforms. They're not platforms that we own. So we have a website um, for our business with a sign-up page that you can, that, so that we can send direct emails to. Um, I don't do, for our business, um, we don't do a lot of, you know, direct marketing. We predominantly use social media, but we do have that blog and we do have that website. Um, that we can direct people to and, and have our customers be able to find us in the event that, you know, all social media went, disappeared from our um, devices and, and computers tomorrow. So um, I do think it's really important that you are using a mailing list or a website or a blog or, or some tool like that that you can capture your customers directly. Um, in terms of social media, um, does the strategy change depending on the platform you use? Yeah, it does. It definitely does change depending on the platform that you use. You know, I think with um, your Twitters, you know, you could post up to 50 times a day. I mean, that's a bit extreme, but you could definitely post a lot more often on, say, Twitter than what you would on Instagram and Facebook um, because the nature of Twitter is to have those quick, you know, conversations and, and they can be quite lengthy. Um, whereas if we were to do that on Instagram or Facebook, I think our followers would get cranky because that, that would be quite spammy there. So, um, yes, definitely the strategies um, differ across the platforms and, and you will find that as you um, get more involved in those platforms that you will naturally change your strategies up um, for each one. Cool. Uh, Re asks, is there a magic dollar value on what we should aim at each week to get a good coverage on Facebook for paid advertising? Hmm, that's a good question, Ray. Um, look, I found that twenty-five dollars a week um, in our regional communities for the businesses that I work with in our regional communities gets a really good return. So we get really good reach um, with those sorts of posts and good um, engagement with what we're advertising. So um, obviously, it depends on your budget. Um, for smaller businesses, you know, $25 a week is a reasonable um, amount that you can budget in there for a regular advertising spend. I, you know, all I can suggest is to play around um, and that's the great thing about social media is that you get that, that data, you know, you get that feedback on what your spend is reaching, who's engaging. So I, it's all about testing it and, and seeing what works best. Cool. Um, there's a probably more interesting question in regards to utilization of funds. Um, if I donate, or sorry, if I uh, uh, if I implement uh, a certain budget to one social media platform as opposed to another, 
am I cut, cutting out a large portion of my potential market size? Um, I think that would come back to doing some market research on where your customers are. So, um, you know, again, if, if most of your customers are sitting on Facebook, then I don't think you're cutting out your market by investing more heavily there than, say, Instagram. Um, another question, um, if I invest $50 a day into Facebook and I get a certain amount of reach or um, interactions, how do I convert that into paying customers? Yeah, and that look, that's a great question because that's really where your direct marketing comes into play. So you're wanting to convert those um, interactions into your sales funnel. So direct them to your mailing list or your, um, you know, your blog where you can be remarketing to them. So where you're really um, engaging with them in a bit more, um, I guess, personal way. So. If you're not already doing that, that's where that that's the next stage that your social media marketing needs to direct you to. Um, I think we'll go one last question here. So, um, you've talked about how you don't need to be creative to do um, to do social media and to come up with innovation, but how do I get my message across that uh, my product is good when I don't have the the right kind of communication skills? Yeah, it's a really tricky one. I think that's where if you can afford to engage a social media person or a marketing person um, to work with you in the first instance. So what I like to do with my clients is to work with them to teach them those communication skills but ultimately you want your voice to come through on social media that's you know that's why it's so powerful and why I think people really love social media is that you get that authenticity and that connection with the business owner um, so it's about just teaching you a few tips um, for communication that then allow you to still have your voice and your message um, come through on your social media but um, to deliver it in a I guess a more engaging and effective way and I mean there's stacks of online if you you know stacks of online communication um, tools that you can um, do some research on lots of TED talks on communication and marketing so you know there's lots of free ways to to, to do your research and upskill yourself too but if you can afford to work with um, someone and you know that's just all about checking out their individual style and if you like it and it's something that you would like to replicate then definitely um, approach them to work with them and, and, and get them to help you with some skills so that you're not wasting your energy and time doing all of your social media and not reaching the people that you need to be. Excellent. Okay, I think we'll leave that there. Thank you so much for that, Jess. Really appreciate your time. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending the webinar. Remember to please download the handouts uh, before you exit. The webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Impact Innovation Group website um, later today. Um, you will receive an email um, uh, later on just giving you some more information about the Office of Small Business programs and opportunities. Um, thank you again for tuning in. Jess, thank you so much for providing your insights and have a great day, everyone. Thanks, John. See you later, everyone.